Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Joachim Lucius and if this is your first time joining us, I want to say thank you and you are the right place if you make a mistake, hopefully. Alright, so I want to teach you how to make um, or create black bars in um, DaVinci Resolve 16 and 17 beta. I, I think this um, method also applies to other older versions. Um, so I'll show you three ways on how to create um, black bars in your videos. Alright guys, so we are in DaVinci Resolve 17, the public beta version. And I will try to keep this tutorial as short, as simple and also as direct as possible. Uh, I'm going to try to also explain um, what is needed to be known. Um, and this method also are applicable or should work on DaVinci Resolve 17 and 16, I believe also the older versions. And it doesn't matter if you're on the studio, which is the paid version or the free version. Um, so without no further ado, let's start. So guys, um, just for the record, this is um, a Canon C200 footage shot in 50 frames, um, cinema raw light and all that sweet raw um, goodies Canon gives to you. And I just did a bit of adjustments around there so that this footage looks a bit lively. Not really much though, basically what I did was to apply the Follow.com array load to, to Rec 709 and that was it. Okay, so as this isn't a color grading um, tutorial, I will just um, st go straight into the black bars thing. All right, so uh, the first method here yeah, can be achieved using either the editing page or the color page. Um, I will use the editing page for this and it makes no difference on the color page. You will see the effect as well also there. So what we want to do is if we want to put um, the black bars quote to quote to give you the cinematic look, we basically want to crop and we want to crop the top and the bottom. So let's use 150 as an instance. You see that already it looks quote unquote cinematic again and all that. Um, and I'm going to spend more time on the color tab because um, I feel like this is where a lot of people will use this effect. And the advantage of this um, method is that it, it is applicable only to, <coughs> excuse me, sorry guys, it is applicable only to um, the clip that has the effect. So by doing that, it's, it doesn't affect every clip on the timeline, just the um, individual clips. So if we come, if we want to get the same function with um, the color page, you see with this here, the black bars are present, but with this, it's not. So let me let me just pack it on this. I like this frame. Let me just leave it here. Yeah. So let me say I want to I want to do the same thing here as well too. And remember that we use 150 top, 150 bottom. What we want to do is we want to come to the color page here, and we want to come to the um, sizing. That is after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or first to the last. I want to come over here and we want to stand the very first, um, the very first um, sub window or sub group, whatever it's it's being called. We want, we want to be here. You get me? Um, what we want to do is we want to also come to the cropping, to the top 150 and to the bottom 150. So this gives us similar effects to what we did on the editing page as well too. So this can be done basically either on the editing page or on the whatever page it is. Yeah, you can, you can achieve this um, stuff there. So the advantage is that you have control of individual clips. So let's assume you're making a tutorial, a vlog, whatever the case may be, and you want your talking head as your hero um, video to be the normal aspect ratio, no black bars, nothing. And then you want your B-roll to the slow mo and all those sweet juicy B-roll stuff to be to have the black bars. Um, this is actually a very good method. But then the downside to this is that when you crop these images here, DaVinci Resolve then recognizes these black bars as shadows. So whatever effect you do to your shadows will be um, will will be applicable to these black bars. Um, to show you an example, let's put the blue that everyone puts in their shadows. Let's put the blue in here, yeah? I'm going to just exaggerate this for the purpose of visibility. You see, you can see that <laughs> it's now blue bars, no more black bars. And let's, let's just, as you want, want it, we had intention of making these shadows and this what they look all nice and creamy and all those good things, you know? But then, DaVinci the Resolve also applies the effects you've um, applied to the shadows of the black bars. And that's because DaVinci Resolve then now thinks that this is actually 
um, part of the footage, quote unquote, treatings as shadows as well. To to um, further explain this, if you come to the HDR function, which is on the DaVinci Resolve 17, it's a new and really good um, add-on. I think you should um, update to the 17 if you have to pay DaVinci Resolve. It's really really good. It's a beta version, but honestly speaking, I've never had any sort of um, I've never had any sort of um, crashing, not once, really, really, not once, you know. Um, so what we want to do is, if you click shadows, you see, Resolve highlights everything that it thinks it's shadows. If you come to the dark as an example, for instance, now come to the dark here. So it's actually treating this as darks, which indeed it's, we don't intend for it to be darks. So when you're using this method of cropping, be aware of this. Um, a better way to do this is I'm going to reset um, this one and I'm going to reset this one also I'm going to take away the effect from this a better way to do this is to come to this is a second an easier way if you come to the timeline over here you have what they call output blanking and the output blanking basically are different aspect ratios you have so you have 1.33 1.66 1.77 etc all the way to 2.40 and i believe where most people want to be in is 2.40 so let's say we apply this 2.40 what you're getting is every project on the timeline will have this effect which in a way is a good thing because um let's assume you've shot you have a project and your intention is to apply this black bar to all the footage and this is a good way compared to the previous one because it's applicable to everything and you do not there is no way it is impossible for you to miss um a clip you know but then the downside to this is that you can you can use only the predefined um, aspect ratios. I do not know if you can make your custom output blanking. I do not know that. If you know how to do it, um, please kindly um, let me know via the comment section. But um, that's a downside to this. What, what could be a downside could be an upside because if you have 1.33 for instance, look at this beautiful aspect ratio. If you want to do this via the cropping and all that, then it means you have to crop left, crop right, crop top and crop bottom and all that. You know but yeah when you come to if you're using this method it already gives you that so let's say for some reason you like this you like this um whole aspect ratio and this look you're trying to make a retro movie for instance or whatever the case may be then it's good but the downside to it is that you can apply only the custom aspect ratio so let's reset this and go to the last method which is my favorite um this is something that most people will use davichur um will use um premiere pro and i think also final cut my might be used to i think also sony vegas i use that a very long time but i think also as well too this is um similar to those other um, um editing softwares what we want to do is we want to come to the editing page yeah and we have our clean image nothing on it okay we want to go to our effects library and we want to go to our effects we need to create an adjustment clip rather than not creating just drag and drop yeah so let me just expand this a little bit okay so we have this here this sounds really familiar um what we want to do right now is that we want to crop again you can do this either the editing page or the color page we want to just apply the crop the crop to the top and the crop to the bottom so let's do this again on the color page um, i like the color page and i'm going to show you why i am actually taking you guys to the color page to demonstrate this so we have the adjustment clip here yeah i want to crop the top let's say we want to pull 150 and for the bottom let's say we want to pull 150 also yeah this is what we have uh it's good because you see if you go back to the editing page provided it's dragged above every clip you intend for it to be on you have the effect on it which is really really good and um it's also good because it gives you the flexibility to um edit individual clips you know like so the same effect we did with the very first one let's drag the shadows here as an example let's pull the mid-tones here you know let's pull more of the orange mid-tones and then let's bring the mid-tones down a little bit let's just play with it you know just nothing this is not a show off of whatever the case may be yeah they just you know the point i'm trying to make is that it doesn't affect 
the black bars let's drag let me reset this reset this let's drag the shadows all the way here as an example you see your black bar says the input but then the thing you need to be careful is that this happened to me initially when i learned about this method you might always be on the adjustment clip when you come to the color page and i think the, the, the reason is because you have this above this so you see let's we don't have our icon on any of this stuff now let's go to the color page automatically it comes to the adjustment clip let's leave it on the canon raw let's come back to the editing page there is nothing here let's click even on this very first clip here which is this one now let's go back to the color page for some reasons it goes back to the adjustment clip so you need to be careful because initially i found myself doing my color grading and everything here you know which is good i mean if you intend for it to be that way but then you'll be having the same issue like the very first method then if you put your shadows as well too of course you get the colors on the black bars as well too so you need to just know when to use and how to use and just be careful um with this uh, methods i've shown to you um just like again just like on premiere pro it's good if you intend to say make your color grade or whatever the case wants to be on this one then you have another adjustment layer that serves as the black bars you know so you need to just know when to use these things and how to use them all right guys so that was it for this tutorial i hope you learned something from me and i hope um this was useful if you found this useful of course please give me a thumbs up subscribe my channel it really encourages me to make more videos and until next time i'll be wishing you a nice time keep creating and please put what you've learned into practice adios all right guys so you know the thing is i don't want to sound like a salesman or something and that was a tutorial i hope you found it useful and you know what i'm about to say again um, if you found that useful please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel i'll keep putting out very simple basic but needed tutorials about canon c200 filmmaking in general and um, that will resolve all right until next time wishing you a good morning afternoon evening stay safe wherever you are and adios yeah Whew. you can you can leave like i, I am done I'm, I'm gonna go create something you should go create something also do not stay there and just look at me wasting your time at this point i am not adding any sort of value to your life so you should go create value or go implement what you've learned from me today stop Stop li just listening to me. Stop listening to me. Just go.